Imagine you're a shareholder in the giant oil drilling company Transocean. Say it's April 19th. Transocean's the largest offshore drilling company in the world. It's turning out billions of dollars in profits every year. They've just finished drilling this gold mine of an oil well in the Gulf of Mexico. Happy days for Transocean shareholders as of about April 19th, right? Then April 20th happens. Transocean $650 million Deepwater Horizon oil rig explodes. Eleven rig, rig workers are killed. Two days later, the rig sinks to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico with the well still spewing oil out of control. Not good times to be a Transocean shareholder now, right? Actually, not right. Um, on Friday, this past Friday, Transocean held its annual shareholders meeting in their corporate tax haven in Switzerland. You might remember we fake moved our show to Switzerland for the occasion. After that meeting was over, Transocean made this announcement, an update for its shareholders. Quote, shareholders authorized the board of directors to make a cash distribution to shareholders of approximately 1.0 billion U.S. dollars. One billion dollars to Transocean shareholders. Happy days indeed. That was this past Friday, 22 days after the Deepwater Horizon rig sunk. As Transocean is busy handing out a billion dollars to its shareholders in the wake of this enormous disaster, the company has simultaneously been in court in Texas arguing that its liability for the disaster should be limited to $27 million. Need more cash to hand out to the shareholders. In Washington, Congress and the administration are still trying to figure out, A, how this disaster happened, and B, how to make sure the companies involved are not able to wiggle out of their responsibilities in dealing with it. On the how-did-it-happen front, today, Interior Secretary Ken Salazar testified before the Senate for the first time since that April 20th rig explosion. It was the Interior Department's Minerals Management Service, the MMS, that was supposed to be overseeing the drilling. Secretary Salazar acknowledged today that MMS apparently was not up to the task of doing that regulating, of making sure that all of the rig's safety systems were working. Do you believe that minerals management has adequately regulated blowout preventers? No, uh, the answer is no. Uh, I, I don't... Uh... I, I think that there is additional work that uh, should, uh, should have been done with respect to blowout prevention uh, mechanisms. The Obama administration now taking steps to break up the Minerals Management Service, something that maybe should have happened a long time ago, like, I don't know, maybe when the whole MMS oil industry regulators stooping oil industry lobbyists scandal came to light, maybe that would have been a good time for the break up. In terms of the financial responsibility for the disaster, Democratic Senator Bob Menendez tried to move ahead on legislation that would raise the financial liability for oil companies when spills happen. It would raise the cap on their liability from $75 million, that's it, to $10 billion. Mr. Menendez tried to pass that for a second time today. You might recall the first time he tried it, it was blocked by Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski. Today it was blocked by Republican Senator James Inhofe of Oklahoma. Mr. Inhofe's reason for objecting, he said that passing this legislation would give big oil what they want. Big oil would love to have these caps up there so they can shut out all the independents. If you raise the caps right now precipitously to this height, you're going to help the five big oil companies, including BP. Big oil wants their liability raised. And if we pass this legislation, it'll prevent little mom and pop oil companies from getting into the biz. Because, you know, they might be financially responsible for these spills. And we couldn't have that. Taxpayers have to take care of it. This argument is so weird. I'm sorry. It's not all that professional to note that, but it's weird. Mom and pop oil companies need to get in there in order to compete with the big companies. And in order to keep that room available to the mom and pop companies, we have to make sure if they create giant spills that they don't have to pay for them. Really? That's your argument? Really? Companies that can afford to pay for these spills are companies like, oh, say, BP. And it now looks like the financial burden of this cleanup may be the least of BP's concerns. Yesterday, eight U.S. senators, led by Democrat Barbara Boxer of California, wrote to the Attorney General asking him to open a criminal 
investigation into BP's actions. The letter to Attorney General Holder reads in part, quote, we request that you review this matter with respect to civil and criminal laws related to false statements made by BP to the federal government. Joining us now is Democratic Senator Barbara Boxer of California. She is chair of the Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works. Chairman Boxer, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for having me on the show, Rachel. Uh, Senator, what um, makes you think that BP might have potentially violated even criminal laws here? What are the false statements that you're worried about? Well, it, with your permission, I want to be very precise here, so I have them on this chart. Okay. What they said when they applied for the permit to the federal government was, in the event of an unanticipated blowout resulting in an oil spill, it is unlikely to have an impact based on the industry-wide standards for using proven equipment and technology for such responses. So it was very soothing, and they basically said, no problem, we know how to deal with it. Then, after the spill, listen to what they said. All of the techniques being attempted or evaluated to contain the flow of oil on the seabed involve significant uncertainties because they have not been tested in these conditions before. So it's amazing. They were so sure of themselves. And then after the fact, they admitted they weren't ready at all. So it seems to me we're looking at a company that has already pled guilty to a couple of felonies in the past. Uh, one involving a situation in Texas where people were killed, and another one in the Arctic. And, and now it seems to me that they made false statements. And I think we need to go after that. When the government received that application for drilling that described proven equipment and technology, as you just said, for responding yes. to any disaster, Shouldn't the government have looked into it and said, proven, is it proven? Drilling at this depth, has it been proven to work at this depth? Isn't this also a disastrous failure on the part of the Minerals Management Service at the Department of the Interior to have had a lot of skepticism about that initial application? Oh, I think it's a nightmare. And all you have to do is go back to some of the exposés that some of the press have done on the very cozy relationship, and you've talked about it a lot, between the Mineral Management Service and the very companies that they're supposed to oversee. It's a nightmare. I mean, there were stories about uh, parties and drugs and everything else going along with it uh, that the oil companies were, uh, were, were inviting all of the people that oversaw them to these parties. Now, it seems to me very clear that we have to separate out the permitting process from the safety process. It cannot be in the same agency. And I spoke with uh, today when we had Secretary Salazar there, who is really struggling um, trying to get this thing right. He has stated that there ought to be a separation of those two functions and have a separate agency for the safety. But he, he talked about originally putting it at the MMS, the Manage M Mineral Management Service, I think it needs to be completely separate, so we'll work together on that, he and I and others. Should there be permits for deep water drilling at all? Uh, I found myself thinking about this not only when I, in hearing that, that second admission that you just read from BT, BP talking about how none of the spill response technologies are proven at this depth, but also looking at Shell Oil getting their final approval or trying to get their final approval to go ahead with deep water drilling or, excuse me, with underwater drilling off Alaska. They've They've been t bragging about how they're going to pre-stage one of those domes that didn't work in the Gulf in case there's a spill up there. They're going to pre-stage a response ship, which wouldn't have helped with what happened in the Gulf, and we don't know if it, would happen, if it would work in the Arctic. Should there not just be a moratorium on this until we feel more confident in the technological response that the industry has been bragging about until they're proven wrong? Rachel, in my mind, it's a pretty straightforward call. We need a pause right now. And not only that, but members of my committee were saying to the uh, Council on Environmental Quality today, Nancy Sutley, it's a very good person there, saying we don't even know how many of these wells are out there right now that got the expedited procedure and didn't have to do detailed uh, environmental reports. So I think there needs to be a pause in this area 
And the truth of the matter is, what we are putting at risk here is enormous. In the Gulf Coast region, more than 300,000 jobs, Rachel, <clears throat> related to fishing, tourism, recreation. Um, I can tell you in my home state where we have fought hard for moratoria, and thank goodness we have one at the moment, if you look at the number of jobs created by the oil companies versus the number of jobs created in the tourism industry, recreation, and fishing, there are so many more in those other areas rather than the oil companies that it's very clear we need a timeout. Too much is at risk here. And um, I, I simply cannot believe some of the comments that were made today by BP that they already were predicting this wouldn't be a big deal. This is a big deal. It, right now, there's an area the size of Pennsylvania that is off limits for fishing in the Gulf, right now. Democratic Senator Barbara Boxer of California, thank you for joining us on this mm -hmm. utterly infuriating issue tonight. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Um, as we're going out here, control room.